Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys a bit of a guide on minions in Diablo 4. Now this is not a guide to a specific build. It is a discussion of how things are going with minions and minion-centric builds that people have been considering. Now minions are pretty interesting in Diablo 4. Um, it is a pretty effective playstyle, and as someone who really enjoys like the micromanagement of different tiers of minions and making them work together and for you and learning how they behave so you can use skills and certain tricks and playstyle to min-max them and the overall feel of being like a master of the undead, I actually think it's pretty good in Diablo 4. But you do have to set it up in uh, a few different ways, and that can be pretty important. In terms of the just feel of it, though, I think it is good. I think minions will not appeal to people who don't already like playing minion builds and like Pal of Exile or whatever, but I think if you do like playing minion builds and ARPGs, Diablo 4 does actually deliver on the satisfaction of playing them quite well. I would say it is like a 9 out of 10 on the overall feel of being a summoner. I think the minion survivability nerfs that they did early on and slightly reverted, overall the minions feel like they're in a pretty good place. Now, in terms of stats, there are a lot of things to consider. Um, in terms of offense and defense, there is a bit of a mix here, and I want to just quickly go over that. First of all, I want to say that a lot of things seem to maybe not work. I have heard of people saying that the cult leader, which gives you 15 more damage with your minions for each type that you have, the warriors, the mages, and the golems, I have heard people say that this just doesn't work at all. I actually tested this right before this video, and it seemed to kind of work, actually, so I'm not too sure. When I first started my Necromancer, I was getting some of the minion damage nodes over here, and I was amplifying them with the Dead Razor. And honestly, I can tell you that it didn't really feel like my damage was going up. And you might think, it's like, yeah, maybe you don't notice 35% damage. The thing is that when you are first leveling a character through the glyph system, the very first glyphs that you get, are super noticeable because at that point in the game you have like no additive damage so if you go from no additive damage and you get like a hundred minion damage you're gonna double your damage okay the, the the scaling actually tapers off later when you first get into the glyph system and i did level up these glyphs pretty early it felt like my damage was staying exactly the same uh, some people are saying that the generic minion damage stat doesn't work at all right now. Uh, but, you know, maybe this will be fixed. I just want to add it in that that was also my experience. And to further back that up, uh, I later started leveling the control glyph, damage to crowd control enemies. Um, this noticeably was increasing my damage. Every, ev even every int node that I'm now taking really did feel like my damage was going up. So, there's a lot of bugs. A few other ones, the Army of the Dead attack speed legendary power uh, doesn't seem to work. Uh, there's some debate as to the attack speed based legendary power. Each time one of your summoning minions damages an enemy, gain attack speed for three seconds. Um, I think this works, but I think it doesn't refresh the entire stack when a new one is applied. Um, so it might feel like it's not working very well if your minions don't already have high attack speed. And it's not easy to get high attack speed. Um, minions get like 30% of your attack speed, so you can get like attack speed on gloves or something. There's a minion attack speed stat on necro shields. Get to that in a second. And there is an attack speed stat on an amulet for minions. But the amulet is like super highly contested for stats. So really, you're not going to be getting a lot of attack speed. Uh, there is, I think, a little bit on the paragon tree, which is incredibly important to get. Um, so yes, there is a lot of wonky stuff. There is a lot that doesn't seem to quite work very well. Uh, but I think there are a number of things that Blizzard has to fine tune across the board in Diablo 4 that I would be surprised if they actually tackle in the next few months alone. In terms of stats, though, the minions get about 30%. Um, oh, I actually want to go to Paragon. Make, make another 
detail here. They get 30% of your uh, thorns, I think it is, 30% of your attack speed, and 30% of your global attack speed, and 30% of your um, critical chance. Uh, and I don't believe they have a base critical chance. So I don't think they have like a 5% base crit, and then they also get like 30% of yours. I think they just literally get 30% of yours. When you first start playing a minion-based necromancer, your minions are like never critting. I think they get full crit damage, but it's really hard to scale crit. So is it worth it to get crit? I don't know. Um, I, I think maybe not, actually. Uh, but there are some interesting mechanics here. So if, um, if you read some of these glyph things, uh, you really need to kind of understand how stats work in Diablo 4. So for every 5 int purchased within range, you deal 7.5% increased damage to crowd control targets. That would suggest that it does not apply to your minions. However, anything that goes in your character sheet is actually damage versus damage versus crowd controlled enemies is not you versus crowd controlled enemies and this is also the case for the vulnerable glyph exploit it's you deal increased damage to vulnerable targets but no the actual stat on the character sheet and this is verifiable is vulnerable damage so you can't scale crit very well but it looks like your minions are getting vulnerable damage, so you're going to want a lot of that if you can get it. They're scaling off of your main stat. Uh, it can be difficult to get these, the, the damage with, but we learned that it's all in the same bucket. So you want to get like damage versus. Damage versus injured is all over the Paragon tree. Damage versus crowd control is in the Paragon tree. Damage versus elites, it's all there. So get the most accessible one for scaling. And... Um, yeah, you'll generally do okay. There are also some uh, consistency-based things, some like possibly bugs. Uh, I personally tested Amplify Damage. It says you deal 9x increased damage to cursed enemies. So I tested this with Thorns, which is uh, it doesn't have a damage range. Uh, and I can verify that Amplify Damage works with at least your goal. It works with your minions, I think, uh, even though it says you deal. So there's massive inconsistency. You're, you're going to have to test this stuff. I don't know if it's bugged. I don't know if the tooltip is bugged. Um, uh, there's another one where the Shadow Blight, so Shadow Blight, uh, you get Shadow Blight if you hit something with Shadow, and then it should keep stacking, you know, um, every 10th time an enemy receives Shadow Damage from you or your minions while they're affected with Shadow Blight. So I think you're the one who has to apply Shadow Blight, but your minions, the Shadow Mages at least, should be able to stack it. They can't stack it, they don't work at all. So this is still a good note for a number of reasons, but it's, it's again, it's kind of, it's kind of a mess. Anything that increases your character sheet damage, and we're talking about this here, seems to work with minions, so you can check without uh, exhaustively testing some mechanics, and one of those is the corpse mechanic. So you deal 9x increased damage for 6 seconds after consuming a corpse. That actually increases your attack power, so it's not just you, it's like the overall scaling mechanisms of you. And again, any kind of stuff like this, if you want to be sure, you might have to test it, look it up, or talk to someone who actually plays Necromancer, because there is very poor consistency in understanding what actually works with minions based on the text written in the game. But they generally take most of your offensive stats, again, except for attack speed, crit chance, and thorns. Okay. Now for defense, why don't we start with shields? Shields in Diablo 4 are like the saddest of the sad in items. Shields uh, give you a block chance, uh, but it's basically damage reduced by like about 10%, 12% or something, uh, and it's not consistent DR, so it's garbage. Uh, shields get thorns. They oh, we got a little surprise pack here. They get thorns, so 30% of that can go on your minions. You can actually increase the thorns, but the thorns uh, minion build uh, kind of scales off really hard in the high difficulty levels because the monsters have damage reduction mechanics as they level up, and in the higher difficulty levels on top of that. Uh, I haven't seen a really successful endgame thorn build, so basically the implicit stat on a shield is terrible. Uh, it does scale with level, and you can get extra thorns as a stat on a shield, uh, which is also terrible, but that skills infinitely with item power, so it's like health and 
maybe just health. I think there's one other. Anyway, there's not a lot of stats that just get... Like, if, if this was an item level 800 shield, it would have a slightly higher top end on the Thorns roll. Okay. Plus 80% main hand weapon damage. Well, if you use a two hand, your uh, two hand has twice the damage of a one hand. So this is 10% less damage. But it's much worse than that. You get no armor on a shield. Armor is huge. We'll talk about that in a second. No armor on a shield, some trash thorns, and you have to use a one-hander. Why are one-handers bad? Well, it looks like minions have their own attack speed and then use the damage, the actual damage, not the DPS, the actual damage of your weapon. So this makes two-handed scythes the best weapons for minion builds as a baseline. Why? Because two-handed sides have a 0.9 attack speed. Uh, the next best would be a two-handed sword, even though that has a crit multiplier implicit, two-handed swords are one attack per second. So as a baseline, you get some crit multi, but you can't scale crit very well, so that's not all that useful. But 0.9 per second versus one is 11% more damage per hit. And damage per hit is the only thing you care about. You want damage per hit, and you want to scale their attack speed from that. Um, I have been told that people have tested this mechanic, and in some versions of the game in the past, the minions did actually scale with your weapon's attack speed. From my tests, I believe in the server slam, and just before I made this video, um, they have their own attack speed, in fact. Changing to a faster weapon will only lower their damage. There are some advanced things, cooldown reduction based and mechanic based, where you might want to actually use a one-hander, but until the very expert nuanced level of endgame summoner builds, you want to be using a two-hander, and you want to be using a two-handed scythe. But it is a Diablo game, you find items based on opportunity, you might find a sword that just has way better stats. Okay, uh, one hands, you, it, it probably just going to be worse though. Okay, so scythe is what you're looking for, but you might just find a better sword than a scythe, so it might, it might be fine to use that. In terms of defense, okay, defense is hugely important because um, your minions will stay alive pretty well. The most important thing for defense is your passive tree. You see these four nodes? Get all of them, three points apiece. So the Skeleton Priest it heals for ad an additional 60% of their maximum life. It's like, wait, what? How does it do that? Well, basically, you get a corpse, and if you have the maximum number of skeletons, which I don't, it'll res a skeleton. Now, you get a corpse, and you do have the maximum number of skeletons, you get a Skeleton Priest. The Skeleton Priest does a heal over time, which is basically negligible, but then if you have that passive, after five seconds of giving that heal over time, it will actually heal every single minion, including your golem, for 60% of their total life. So if you are using the priest every five seconds or so, your minions have ridiculous defense and offense increased capabilities. Okay. You also get death's defense. Your minions cannot lose more than 30% of their maximum life from a single instance. Uh, this is very good. Okay, uh, the other ones are damage based, but you should still take them. Um, There's a lot. Uh, minions also get your damage reduction effects, but it's a little nuanced, and I want to go over that. So, you know, I like Bone Storm. Your Golem gets Bone Storm. Your damage reduction is increased by 15 while Bone Storm is active. Uh, I'm pretty damn sure that your minions are also getting 15% damage reduction. In the Paragon tree, I really, really like Death Razor in this position. It's incredibly efficient. And look at this. 35.2 damage reduction for your minions. Another 8, another 8, another 8. Ridiculous. This glyph is only level 15. It'll get stronger even as I level it later. So that's a huge amount of DR, but I don't recommend you get any more than that in terms of like legendary powers. But I do recommend that you get armor. Armor is simply crazy. They might nerf it, but it is so crazy. It is by far the strongest defensive mechanic you can get on your character, and it looks like your minions inherit your armor as well. So that is very good. 
uh, they're going to start taking negligible damage from same level opponents and the really high opponents where like they get absolutely crushed well you have the max hit 30 percent per hit so your minions even though they're getting just destroyed if you're constantly doing the priest heal you can still keep them up through literally anything they're also going to get a lot of defensive stats nine damage reduction um, dodge chance against close enemies is super good and let me explain dodge is surprisingly good for minions and that is because when you dodge a hit you don't get crowd controlled by it if a mob does like a freezing like a like a freezing bolt or something it's not just a damage reduction component it's the fact that if it misses because it's dodged well your minion's not going to be frozen. So you can get dodge on pants and you can get dodge on boots. And uh, another stat here that is enormous. Boots are one of your most important st uh, slots for a minion build, believe it or not. You want the move speed. I believe your minions do get your move speed. You want the dodge chance, not just because it's damage reduction, damage mitigation, but because it reduces how frequently they're crowd controlled. And the damage reduction while injured is enormous. Injured in Diablo 4 is 35% or less health. So when you're 35% or less health, you take like almost half damage for a single stat on the boots. And this is passed on to your minions, which is unbelievably good. The biggest pro tip that I have for minion builds is getting topazes in your armor. Topazes have... The biggest tip I can give you guys for necromancers is getting topazes in every single armor piece. Uh, now, the other options are rubies, which is give you uh, like about 10% more life or so, which is still pretty good, but it's maximum life. It only goes off of your base life, so it's not as good as it first seems, but it's still pretty good. Uh, there is damage reduction while fortified, and you can be fortified easily on a necromancer. However, when something is fortified and it gets hit, you get like a fortified like little combat like tool, like tool tip there and that is not triggering on your minions so the way that i believe fortified works in diablo 4 with minions specifically is i believe they're getting the damage reduction component of fortify but i don't believe that they are actually fortified so when you use sapphires in your gear that gives you damage reduction if you are fortified i don't believe that your minions get that damage reduction However, as a necromancer, you are getting crowd control a lot. You do have the crowd control break with blood mist, but it's a pretty long cooldown usually, and you're typically going to use it in emergency situations. Other than that, you're going to be slow, you're going to be chilled, everything. And that's where everything goes to all hell. If you use full topazes in the highest grade in every single slot in your armors, you have almost 50%, it's like 40 something percent damage reduction while crowd, crowd control impaired, which is nearly all the time when you're actually playing the game. And this is passed on to your minions. This armor stacking and a good pair of boots will make your minions survive practically anything in this game. And I haven't seen people really talk about that. The other really important part for defenses is barriers. Your minions get your barriers in Diablo 4, and that is a really powerful tool. Early on through the campaign, you unlock a legendary power that gives you a fairly large barrier for 10 seconds when you hit an elite that can trigger once every 30 seconds. That one is really vital to keeping your minions alive because large elite packs are going to be the most difficult thing for a necromancer to handle until the... Well, actually, it's probably the whole way through. But later on, you can get the Bone Storm stuff. But any kind of barriers are just massive. All your minions are getting it. The overall effect of barriers for survivability of a Necronist minions cannot be overstated. It is so powerful. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is just minion AI. Just so you guys know how it works. Okay, So, if you use most skills your minions are not necessarily going to work. Like, if you if you run ahead of your minions and you curse. Okay, the minions actually cast Blizzard. The, but, like, the minions didn't engage because of that. Okay? 
They started engaging because they were getting attacked and I was getting attacked a little bit. The Skeln mages have the best awareness, so they'll actually engage combat better than all your other minions. But usually when you're doing dungeons, especially ones with narrow corridors, they're kind of too far back to actually do that. The minion AI in Diablo 4 is a little bit wonky, but I have to say I quite like it. Generally, you're going to want to have a skill that just hits stuff from range. I like Blight, but I think Bone Spear might be an even better choice, or you can use like a long range auto attack. If you use a skill like this, your minions start to engage because the minion AI has kind of like a hierarchy. Like if I do a blight there, the minions, they're ready to go, okay? If you use your golem's ability, if you're using a golem that has like um, uh, an ability that does damage, your minions will like kind of follow the golem. But the overall effect of like the minions engaging in combat has to do Kind of like a, imagine kind of like a, a, an army of a bunch of like drunken people, okay? So you're the boss, the golem is like the general, okay? If you get attacked, they're like, okay, you know, something's happening. If a golem gets attacked, they're like, okay, they're still looking around, they're still looking around. If any one of the minions gets attacked, they'll fight back, okay? But the overall mass of your minions has kind of like an alert aggro level, okay? If your minions have been in combat, if they've been attacked, if you're attacked, if you're using skills that hit other stuff, your minions are like on point. Your minions are like ready to go. It's like, bring it on. You know, we're in just full out combat mode. They're just like hyped up for more combat. So what what happens is if, if you're doing one of those events where you are like using, uh, you know, different parts of the map to like, you know, save this guy or stand here or stand there. The mob is coming at you constantly. It's really good for those events and minions work really well for those events because they're on high alert. They kind of know that the mob is going to keep coming. For dungeoning, you have to usually run a little bit ahead of your minions and you have to have these like engage type skills that, you know, you can't assume that your minions are going to are gonna do the work. Using the golem to attack can be a bit clumsy because your golem can get stuck in between minions. I think one of my biggest gripes about the minion combat, actually one of my only gripes, is that the golem can't like run through mobs. I think if the golem could just like push mobs out of his way if you had like a knockback thing if you tell your golem to like slam here it should like go through the mobs and then slam there rather than just being stuck and doing nothing right now it's getting stuck and doing nothing a lot unfortunately but it's a pretty cool mechanic and overall i have thoroughly enjoyed playing minions and even though there's a lot of bugs a lot of issues a lot of quirks the overall experience of playing a minion master in diablo 4 i think delivers pretty damn well so Hope you guys learned something from this video, and we'll see you in the next.